Oh, hello guys. I'm um, out for a stroll today uh, in the woods. Uh, and uh, I uh, brought a couple of things. Uh, Craig uh, Forest Broker 111 tagged me uh, on my three favorite knives. Uh, it is a bit hard to pick out three knives. The uh, knives to me mostly are um, uh, you say <laughs> these tools. Uh, it is a uh, uh, obviously a etched tool, and uh, they have a myriad of applications. Uh, I do. I have trained with uh, uh, medieval style uh, daggers and such, so. Uh, there are of course other applications to knife, but um, <laughs> to be honest, it's a uh, it's a hobby. It's not uh, it, it's not meant to prepare me for the street or anything like that. I'm uh, I'm very uh, I'm I like to. To get to know my body and to explore limits and stuff, and uh, uh, the fighting side of things has been with me throughout my life, but uh, it hasn't really been uh, there that much to protect me, uh, although I am quite capable. Um, onto the knives. Uh, I use use a knife every day, to be honest. And uh, most of the time it's a small blade. Uh, this one, uh, it's a frost uh, Mora knife. It uh, has a nice length to the blade. I have broken up the tip. It is about five years old. I have uh, sharpened it. A uh, number of times and uh, reshaped the blade a bit to uh, have taken off uh, the ridge and made it convex. Uh, that way, I can. Uh, uh, it's an angle thing <laughs> when carving. So, uh, that's my first one. Uh, oh, I have to show this one as well. Uh, a knife often needs a edge protection. And at times, most of the time, it's uh, sheets, sheets, and uh, this one I've made. Uh, the um, it's a cowhide. Um, made it. This is the second knife that has gone in the sheet, so it's uh, about eight years old. It's got the uh, wood uh, wood blocks inside. A uh, Generous draining hole, uh, cleaning hole. Uh, it's got a uh, double welt in there. Um, its uh, the edges are uh, chamfered to make a smooth transi transition. And this uh, cap is uh, just to secure it a bit more. And it's a dangler, so that's the first one. Second one, courtesy of Craig, to take off the belt. Um, it is made by Abe Elias, a famous Canadian knife maker, and uh, a very good at that. It came with a uh, fire steel. I put a night ice type glow stick on it, uh, a night ice glow stick, and a small button compass. The original Dagler was not very good, to be honest. Uh, one of the snaps broke uh, right off the bat, and uh, it was quite misshapen and hard to. Uh, yeah, it didn't sit right, so I made a one in leather 
with a rifle bottom kind, kind of stud. It's just a screw on thing. So and I put a brass D-ring. Uh, the original one was a black side side saddle uh, one. Good quality, but uh, I like the brass uh, look of it. Uh, matches the bottom. Bottom. Um, nice thick spine and a uh, full flat grind. Got the sparrow there. As you see, I keep my knives in immaculate uh, condition. Uh, never dirty, never anything. <laughs> Um, it's close to five mil thick, millimeter thick. I guess it's uh, 316 or something. It uh, does retain the knife, but it can come off. So that's the great thing with the dangler. It's not that easy to tip it over, so to speak. The third one, and uh, the knife I've had. Uh, it comes in the middle between the other knives. Uh, I haven't. I've had it for three years, I think. I made a sheath for it myself. I like the Japanese style of sheath with uh, wood, uh, made of wood. Um, they don't uh, retain moisture at, as easily as uh, leather, leather can. From my experiences, at least. So I made it out of simple pine uh, plywood. So it's a uh, seven millimeter thick, thick with a, a sandwich construction and some uh, wood screws uh, retained by paracord. Uh, big leather flap protects my side from the handle. Um, oak, oak stud with a brass rivet I made myself, hollow rivet, rivet. and uh, nice and simple. It is a uh, beast of a blade and uh, for all of you that cringes when you see the <laughs> my dirty knives uh, I do, I do keep an edge on them, so it's just, uh, I'm trying to get the browning on this one. The browning will uh, be a natural uh, rust uh, defense. He made a diesel taper, so it's uh, 5 mil here and 6.7 here. A nice uh, convict, 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 ex, convict, bitch. Edge. Sorry guys. Convex edge. Got a couple of micro chips in it, and, uh, but that's just from hard use. Uh, it will uh, sharpen out over time, so as you can see there's a lot of stock. It's uh, 75 millimeters high. That's three, three inches, so <laughs> that's your <laughs> UK legal length on the blade. Um, just to give you a uh, perspective on it. So, number of ways to contain it. Uh, so, I love it. It's, uh, I take this instead of a small hatchet. Uh, it's a pry bar as well. <laughs> as well. So, very happy with it. There is uh, three people I want to tag. None of them uh, know about this on forehand, so I don't expect uh, that they uh, should do it. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, first one is uh, Andy Stony Broke. He has made a lot of knives, and I know he can put an edge on things. So uh, it will be nice to get his perspective on uh, his three. Uh, favorite knives. 
second one is from uh, Spain, Rich. Uh, he has been really busy, so hopefully he will <laughs> he will come back to us. So uh, to give him a nudge, I'm gonna tag him. That's uh, Lone wood Woodpecker. Uh, links will be in the description. Third one is uh, the maker of this one, Scott. He has gone through a lot of knives and handled a lot of knives, so it would be nice to hear his opinion on it. So that's Scott from Wessex Bales and Bushcraft. Thank you again Craig for the tag and uh, the uh, awesome knife. I will be using this in a later video, so I know you're itching to see what I think about it and uh, see it in use. Thank you guys and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.